Hello everyone and welcome to vmwarelab.org, your VMware cloud management blogger. My name is Mahar Al-Asfar, I'm a cloud management staff at C with VMware. In this video, we will be covering the vRealize Automation 8.1 and vRealize Automation Cloud Infoblogs IPAM plugin integration version 1.1. So let's get started. We will be taking a look at the setup workflow, everything from configuring the Infoblox grid, installing the Infoblox plugin to VRA 8.1 and setting up the integration. We will be setting up a VRA network profile for an existing type network, and we will be doing the same thing and creating a VRA network profile for an NSX T on-demand network. At the end of the video, we will validate our setup with creating and deleting a VRA 8.1 deployment. With VRLize Automation, you can use an external IPAM provider to manage both IP address assignments and DNS registration for your Cloud Assembly Blueprint deployments. In this integration use case, we use an existing IPAM provider package. In, uh, in this case, is it's the Infoblox package and an existing running vRealize Automation environment to build a provider-specific IPAM integration point. As a side note, VMware did release recently the IPAM SDK to allow other vendors to create such a package for their solutions. The way this works is that we configure an existing network and create a network profile to support IP address allocation for, from the external IPAM provider. Finally, what you do is you create a blueprint that is matched to the network and the network profile and deploy networked machines using IP values obtained from the external IPAM provider. The Infoblox IPAM plugin allows us to easily integrate vRealize Automation 8.1 and vRealize Automation Cloud since it's the same code base with the Infoblox DDI appliance. One of the main features of using Infoblox DDI is that it allows IT teams to consolidate DNS, DHCP, and IP address management into a single platform deployed on-site and managed from a common console. Okay, so we will start with the NIOS setup. We need to set up the Infoblox grid prior to installing and using the Infoblox plugin for VRA 8.1. We have five steps to do that. So we'll start with the create DNS zone for our environment. So I'm gonna switch to my uh, Infoblox. I'll log in with my username and password. So admin, my password, hit login. And the first thing we need to do is navigate to the data management and click on the DNS tab. Uh, notice the plus sign here. We'll drop the menu and select authorative zone. And uh, in step one of the wizard, we will select the add an authorative forward mapping zone and hit next. In step two here, we will enter the name of the zone. So for my Active Directory and my DNS zone, I'm gonna use uh, vmwarelab.local. I'm gonna leave everything here uh, as default and hit next. Now I'm going to use the, in step three here, we will, we will use the uh, set of name servers. So use this set of name servers and click the plus sign here and select pri uh, the grid uh, uh, primary. Once you select uh, here, you can automatically say, since, since this is the only appliance I have, it's gonna uh, auto select uh, or it will be selected automatically. If you have multiple members in the grid, you can select the, uh, the one you want from the pop-up window. We'll hit add to add it to the table and we'll click save and close. 
You can see on the top screen, the configuration changes require a service restart. So we'll go ahead and restart. And uh, there you have it. So that's the first step. We've created uh, VMware lab.local, uh, a DNS authoritative zone. You can see the SOA records, the NS record, the name service record, and the actual A record for the appliance itself. All right, next we will create a network. So we create usually a network for the VRA IP range consumption. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. Switch back to our info blocks. And in here, uh, we will go ahead and uh, click on the IPAM tab. Uh, click on the plus sign and select IP4 network. On step one of the wizard, we will select add network and we'll select manually since this is going to be an IP range uh, that VRA is going to consume. We'll hit next. And I will uh, leave the net mask here, subnet mask to slash 24 and add the network uh, that I am interested in creating this for. That would be 172.16.150.0. I'm going to select automatically create reverse mapping zone for my network. And I'm going to click next. On step three here, we're going to click the plus sign and automatically to add the onfo blocks member that uh, to manage the network. Again, if you have multiple members in the grid, you can select the one from the pop up window. Since again, I have only one. As you can see, it was selected automatically. We'll hit next. On step four here, we will uh, set the default router for the network by clicking the override. So we're gonna do uh, next here and click on the override and provide my router, which is gonna be 172.16 for the network. I'm adding 150 will be dot one. I'm also going to override the domain name so I'm going to do VMware lab that local even 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 uh, uh, so that you saw you saw that it was there already. Uh, it seems that the plugin will not be able to read the inherited options uh, from my testing. So the domain name option must be overridden uh, and set the network and the uh, range levels. Otherwise, the updates uh, from the plugin will not uh, or it will fail. We will uh, enter the domain name and hit override. Uh, the DNS name for this network is going to be the Envoblox uh, grid. So that's going to be 168, uh, will be 192, 168, 110, 48. So enter. And then uh, we're going to leave uh, everything uh, as default. We're good to go. We'll hit save and close. Again, you can see that the configuration changes require a service restart. So we'll restart these services. All right, you can see uh, my network uh, got created. Also, if I go to my DNS, you'll see that there is a um, reverse lookup zone that was created for the network. So we're good to go. All right, so uh, this was the network. So now we're going to create the uh, the network container. And the network container is for IP blocks, uh, which is uh, consumed in VRA uh, by leveraging the on-demand networks. So let's go ahead and set that one. So it's the same procedure. We're gonna to go to the IPAM tab, select IPv4 networks. Now, instead of going and selecting manually, I'm gonna go ahead and select the add network container. 
and click next. Set my subnet mask to slash 24. And the network here, uh, subnet that I'm creating this for is gonna be 172.16.151.0. I'm also going to hit next. Uh, we're not gonna use any Active Directory. We'll hit next and we'll hit save and close. You can see the icon is a little bit different. This is an IP range. This is an IP block. We will click and, uh, on, the, uh, on the menu here and edit the network. What we want to do is we want to open the IP4 DHCP options and then overwrite uh, the things uh, exactly the same way we did for the for the network. So for this, uh, the router for this IP block is going to be uh, 172.1 and the domain name, I'm going to overwrite that and I'm going to add VMware lab. local and my DNS server is going to be the info blocks grid 192.168.110.48 enter and I'm going to leave the rest of the stuff uh, as default and simply save and close Next, we need to create a cloud API account. So any admin account with access to the cloud API can be used uh, for the Infoblox plugin for VRA 8.1, including the default admin account if you wanted to. As a best practice, we need an account uh, that uses the least required privileges uh, to, do, to do the integration. So this account that we're creating need to have a read write permissions for the network objects, the DNS zone and the reverse DNS zone that we just created. Uh, it will also need a permission to read the grid DHCP properties, things like the lease, the router, uh, the DNS server name, etc. So let's go ahead and actually do that. To do that, we'll navigate to the administration menu and we'll go to and click the plus sign here to add a new user. I've already created the, the user, this user uh, before, but I am uh, uh, recreating the user uh, for uh, the sake of the demo. So in the wizard here, we'll select local and we'll type in the uh, name and password. So we'll, we'll do uh, demo user. And in the, next to the uh, admin group here, we'll select, uh, we'll click select. And in the admin group, I'm going to go ahead and select cloud API only and press okay. And scroll down, leave everything as default and hit save and close. All right, so now I have my demo user. So we'll need now to set the, perm the permissions. So we'll click on permissions, the permission tab. And then I'm going to, in the group column, I'm going to click the cloud API group. And then I'm gonna press the plus sign here and click on object permissions. In the group membership here, we'll click the select objects. And in the object filter, we'll select the IP4 network first. IP4 network. Uh, and we can uh, type in the, uh, like the first uh, number of the IP address and just enter. You'll see this is the, uh, uh, network that we created, the 172.16.150.0. Uh, we'll click the network that we created. We'll click on read write and we'll make sure that we select 
the host addresses, the DHCP range, and the fixed addresses, all three, to be able to read and write. And we'll click Save and Close. Next, we will repeat the, the same steps and add the same permissions for the network container that we did. So again, we go and do object permissions. We'll select the objects. Here, we will select the IP4 container. We'll use the same filtering. You can see this is the 172, 172.16.151. And basically, click on it, select read and write, and make sure I have these three checkboxes for the IPv4 host addresses, DHCP range, and FICT addresses and reservations. Next, I'm going to click Save and Close. Next, we want to do the zones. So again, we'll do again object permissions. And for the select object right now is going to be all zones. So if I scroll up, select all zones. And in the filtering or the search, I'm going to type my domain. So vmrlab.local, hit Enter. You can see the uh, forward mapping that we created. So we'll click on that. And we will select read and write. And we want to make sure that the account can read and write the host and the A records. Those two are the main two. And then I'm going to hit save and close. And then I'm going to repeat the same process, but this time I'm going to select the reverse mapping. So all zone, that's going to be 172. And that's my reverse mapping type. I'm going to click it. In here, we're going to do also a read write but we want also the host and the PTR instead of the A record. I'm going to hit save and close. Lastly, I'm going to hit uh, global permissions and select the DHCP permissions. And I want to make sure that I have grid DHCP properties with read only and then hit and save and close, which I did already before. We'll hit close. And uh, that's basically uh, 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 everything that you need to do around the minimum requirements. Of course, as you add new networks, uh, that new networks that you want VRA to consume, you have to come back here and add the uh, proper permissions for those new networks that you created in InfoBlox. Next, we need to add the extensible attributes. Many of these uh, extensible attributes are added to the grid when you install the Cloud Automation CNA license. So tenant ID, CMP, CMP type, VM ID, and VM name. Uh, you will only need uh, to manually uh, to add the VMware NIC index, which is uh, an integer, and the VMware resource ID, which is a string. But uh, it would be a good idea to actually confirm uh, that all the extensible attributes are there. So let's switch back to InfoBlox. And uh, to uh, add the extensible attributes, uh, we are already under administration. We simply uh, hit the extensible attributes. And anytime you want to add an attribute, you simply click on the plus sign, uh, provide the value of the attribute, the type of the attribute, whether it's a string or an integer and then hit save and close. So I've already went ahead and created uh, all the required extensible attributes. Like I mentioned, you want to make sure that the VMware NIC index, which is right here, 
which is an integer. It's already added. And the VMware uh, resource ID. Uh, and uh, we repeated, or I repeated the same exact steps to make sure the rest are all created. Uh, and, uh, and that would conclude the NIOS uh, setup, uh, which uh, basically completes all everything that we needed to do. And we can move on to installing the Infoblox plugin 1.1 in VRA 8.1. The Infoblox IPAM plugin for VRA 8.1 is available uh, to for download on the VMware Solution Exchange, or which is the marketplace. So HTTPS marketplace.vmware.com. You will need your my VMware account to be able to download the plugin. And you can, of course, uh, sign up for a free account uh, on the site if you don't have one. Uh, uh, the, uh, we, and then after that, we install the uh, Infoblox provider to set up the integration uh, by going into VRA, uh, infrastructure, connections, integrations. We'll add the integrations and we will select the IPAM type integration. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this time I'm going to go to VRA and click on the login page and login into my VRA instance. And once I'm in, I can go to uh, Cloud Assembly. Uh, go to the Infrastructure menu. Scroll down to integration under connections. But to add the integration, uh, you click on add integration. Select IPAM, give it a name. And in the manage IPAM provider, you want to upload the package that you downloaded from the marketplace. And I've already done that, uh, but to uh, import the provider package, you simply click on import. Select your uh, where you download where you downloaded the package, and simply select the package zip file, and upload it to the site or to VRA. Once the package is uh, uploaded, it will import it. And uh, because the package already exists, I'm gonna hit continue here and then the version will be uh, updated to version 1.1, which is the same version, but this is also the same way if there was a newer version of the plugin, uh, you simply just import the provider package and it will overwrite uh, the version that you already uh, uploaded from before. So I'm gonna hit update. Once the, uh, uh, the package is successfully imported, we'll hit close. And we can proceed with uh, doing the integration. We'll cancel uh, this one here and we'll go and show you the existing one I have already created. Make sure you give it a name. Uh, go ahead and choose the provider. So you can click on the package you just uploaded and select the provider which is version 1.1 uh, and then provide the username and password for the uh, of the cloud API account that we created. I can potentially use the uh, demo user here. Provide the password. And uh, you'll see that uh, uh, you have some options here if you want to, uh, you know, disable the certificates check, but we'll keep everything as default and we'll provide the host name of the uh, Infoblox uh, grid appliance that I have and hit validate. Looks like we're good to go. Uh, one thing before I hit save, I want to uh, uh, talk about the running environment. You can see here we're using the, un in the embedded ABX, which is action-based extensibility. Uh, and it says on-prem here since this is VRA 8.1. Uh, 
Uh, if you were using a vRealize Automation Cloud, you would have to download the extensibility appliance first and set uh, set it up to so it's communicating with your SAS account or your SAS version of VRA. Uh, but here uh, we're using the extensibility, which is a service running uh, on the or within within VRA. So we're good to go. We'll hit save, and we're ready to move to the next uh, step. Okay, we'll switch back. Now it's time to create the network profile. A uh, network profile defines a group of networks and network settings that are available for a cloud account in a particular region or data center in cloud assembly. You typically define network profiles to support a target deployment environment. Uh, for example, uh, a small test environment where an existing network has outbound access only or a large load balance production environment that needs a set of security policies. As a step in creating the network profile, we will map an IP range designated in our InfoBlox grid, which we created already, to be used for our VM network. In this demo, we will create or maybe we'll use one network profile, one uh, for an existing network and one for uh, an on-demand network. So let's uh, see how we can do that. So I'm gonna log in into my VRealize automation. All right, and under uh, Cloud Assembly, I'm going to the infrastructure menu and under configure, you can see here we have network profile. So let's go ahead and create a new one. So you have, a, you see, I have a list of network profiles uh, to uh, that represent certain network characteristics in different regions like AWS, Azure, or um, vSphere. And then basically click on new network profile. So uh, in th the region I'm creating this network profile for is the Montreal data center environment. And let's name this um, Montreal Web Network IPAM. All right, just for our demo here. Also, I'm going to associate uh, a capability tag uh, that I'm going to reference later in the blueprint that I'm going to create. So uh, I already, I think, have one here. We'll use the NSX Montreal dash web capability tag and I'll uh, show you where I actually use this capability tag to make sure that the network is connected to this network profile that I'm creating. The second step here is uh, to uh, click or use an existing network or an on-demand network and we'll do both. So the first one is the network tab is th these are the networks where when you uh, uh, anything that you list here is basically used when you provision an, something to an existing network. So the network that I've created, it's actually in NSX. So it's an NSX uh, a logical switch. So uh, I called it Montreal Web IPAM. And uh, this uh, network already connected to a tier one logical router. And uh, I've assigned it uh, the uh, to the Montreal logical router tier one and also I've configured the router ports for that network. So I've connected the network to the Montreal logical router and I gave the gateway, the IP address, uh, 172.16.150.1. Uh, uh, okay, so back here, we should be able to discover the network that we added in NSD because of the NSXT integration. So you can see here, I have the network. I'll select the network for, uh, from the list, press okay. And the first thing I want to do is set the metadata on this network. So uh, I'll click the network and uh, provide the metadata, for example, the domain. Uh, obviously, I've did, done this already. So uh, the, the domain, the the sitter for the network, 172.16.150.0, and it's a slash 24. The gateway for this network and uh, the DNS server, it's going to be uh, uh, pointing to for any VM that gets attached to that network. And then the DNS search, uh, think of this like the customization specification in vCenter. 
All right, so that, now that this uh, has been set on the existing network, I can select the network. Click the manage IP range, just here. Let me, uh, uh, notice that the manage, it says IP ranges, not IP blocks. We will talk on, uh, of, uh, about IP blocks when we uh, talk about network po policies for the on-demand network. So I'm gonna click the manage IP address, click on a new uh, IP range. I have the option, since I have configured the sitter on the network, to either use the VRA, as my IPAM, which I can do that if I want to. But if I want to use more an enterprise class solution like Infoblox or any other uh, IP management system, I'm gonna use the external, reference my provider, which is the VMware Lab Infoblox, and uh, select the address space I wanna add the range from. And uh, for me, this is a, just a small setup. I only have the default, and you can see that I have the range of the network available to me uh, of course, if I wanted to break this into other uh, ranges, I would have to go back to uh, the Infoblox grid and uh, simply uh, create IP ranges uh, within uh, this big block of, of IP addresses. So if, if you want, for example, to create something like from 150.2 to 150.50 and say this is my dev environment, you can do something like that. But right now I'm going to just select the entire thing. I'm going to scroll down, hit add. And now I have uh, this uh, IP range associated with the existing network uh, that I am going to connect to. So uh, now this is one thing that's going to be targeting uh, the existing network. And we can actually control that in the blueprint, which I will show you uh, in a few seconds. Now let's move on to the network policies side of thing. This is when we start talking about IP blocks. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, uh, anytime I reference anything like outbound type networks or routed type networks in, in uh, the infrastructure as code blueprint, I'm going to land here. And uh, instead of using existing network, I'm actually going to create an on-demand network. This is a network that is not, has been not be created. And then uh, this is a way for VRA to talk, to uh, communicate with the NSX manager to be able to create and instantiate that network when the deployment uh, is created or requested. So uh, here we're gonna, uh, uh, we already have an NSXT environment up and running. So uh, uh, we'll select our overlay uh, transport zone. Uh, I'm, uh, the uh, external network that I'm gonna be connected to, like northbound, is gonna be this network, which is my management network. And of course, uh, this is gonna be uh, uh, based on, or the tier zero logical router for this network is gonna be my logical router here, and which is part of this edge cluster. And then we can scroll down to the IP address management section. Now you do have, and you don't really have to use uh, uh, an external IPAM, but uh, again here, uh, I just wanna talk about the uh, IP blog versus IP range. So here, Usually what you do is, you, uh, if you want to use uh, uh, VRA as an IPAM, you can uh, select internal, uh, reference the subnet that you want to create, and here I chose 172.16.100/24, and then you can select the subnet size. So if you want six IP addresses, uh, or 14 or 13, uh, you can uh, um, select the appropriate subnet uh, uh, size you need. We, we don't need something big for this, uh, for this demo. I only need uh, six available IPs within the deployment. So if I have up to actually five uh, uh, IPs, if I have to up to like five VMs that I'm provisioning with a deployment, uh, I have enough IPs uh, to uh, select. Next, the IP range assignment. We need to tell VRA if I'm going to use static and DHCP. Uh, so if I do that, it will split uh, the v the IP available uh, available between a static and a DHCP, uh, or you can uh, uh, completely set it to static, which we will do here because our blueprint is actually going to leverage static IP assignment, so I can leave it as static. But again, this is not the uh, uh, the reason I, I'm showing this, we do want to, uh, after all, use uh, Infoblox. So this will create uh, uh, basically uh, subnets from this network based on the subnet size every time I do a deployment. So how can we do that using an external IPAM? So we simply click the external. Notice here that we say IP block, not IP range. 
uh, again, uh, that's because we've created the network container type on the info blocks, if you remember, and that's and that represents that type of network represents an IPAM block versus uh, the uh, standard network type that we created, which represents an IP range. So again, this is the same process. I go and uh, select my IP integration uh, provider and select the space that I want to pull the uh, uh, subnet from. And you can see we've detected the 172.16.151. Remember the first network that we did for the uh, existing network, it was 150. But this one for the on-demand network, I'm actually creating a 151 subnet. So I'm going to select that, hit add, and simply create. Uh, before I create, of course, I want to mention that I've selected, uh, again, the subnet size that I want to apply on the 172.16.151.0 network. And then uh, the only option I have here is static, which, again, I want to use and hit create. All right, so our profile is created and we're good to go. Now we can move on to the design tab and look at our infrastructure as code blueprint. Here I did uh, have uh, created a, a basic uh, blueprint for our demo. And you can see I have a machine here uh, that uh, is uh, going to use an Ubuntu uh, image or template since this is gonna be deployed on vSphere. Uh, uh, it's a small size. Uh, I do have a small, medium, uh, or large that I can reference. And then the network that I tied this to is an NSXT construct network. The reason being, uh, because you can see you have multiple network constructs. Uh, so if I actually had, uh, if you look at the cloud agnostic, you have a network construct here you can drag and drop. This is if you're building a cloud agnostic blueprint which a blueprint that potentially can be applied on vSphere or any other public cloud uh, uh, platform. And you have your vSphere dedicated network, and then you have your NSX network. So because we wanted to use the router or the uh, routing uh, network type, uh, that's only available within, or the routed schema here is only available in the NSX. And this is where I, I, I wanna use, uh, that's why I wanna use the network uh, NSX construct. So you can see here in the name, this is a cloud.nsx.network, not vSphere uh, NSX.network or, or uh, uh, cloud.network. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, uh, uh, you can see I've already uh, linked the machine to the network and I have the machine and uh, for the network type, we're going to target the existing tab first. So I'm gonna select existing network. And then uh, you can see that I have a small constraint here. This is actually a hard constraint that uh, I'm referencing the tag. So I can tell uh, VRA to place the VM and map it to the network that we've created. And that was the, uh, uh, the Montreal uh, um, web IPAM network that I created. Here I'm just gonna say existing-net for the name of the network versus routed, which we will do next. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and test to make sure that our blueprint uh, uh, will provision. So we'll make sure that the testing uh, is completed. Looks like we're good to go. So uh, let's go ahead and actually deploy it uh, from here, from Cloud Assembly. If I wanted to, once I test the blueprint and the deployment, and this is a blueprint that I want to extend to, to, to my, my projects, uh, then I can uh, create uh, a version for this proven and release it so I can put it in the self-service catalog. But you can always, if we're doing testing or, or validating some of our work, we can always deploy things directly from Cloud Assembly. So here I'm going to call this uh, existing network deployment test. I'm going to select my, uh, my current draft for the uh, infrastructure as code blueprint, I'm going to de deploy this machine. All right, so uh, I'll uh, pause the video here until the deployment is complete, and then we'll get back once it's completed. Looks like our deployment is completed. So let's uh, close the 
deployment. You can see the existing network deployment test has been configured. It provisioned the 426. That's the VM name and uh, it's connected to the Montreal web IPAM network that we created and we have an IP from the IP range that we specified. If we go to the vCenter, we can see that the VM is on the right network. So uh, we're good to go. And we have, again, the IP address assigned to the VM. If I go here and try to ping, to make sure that we have connectivity. Yep, so the reply, we're, we're good to go. So uh, let's go back to Infoblox and see what happened on that end. So remember, uh, this is the network that we just provisioned a VM to. So if I click on the, on the network, you can see that the network already have a DNS object, which is 172.16.150.2. And if I go to the list, you can clearly see that the IP uh, was updated with the name of the machine that VRA has provisioned, and it also updated it with the MAC address and the type of the record that we see here, its host. Also, if we go to the DNS and uh, click on our uh, DNS zone, we can see a, uh, an A record that has been created for the, again, for the machine that VRA has provisioned, uh, which is, uh, a static record and the IP address. Also, if we look at the reverse uh, uh, lookup zone, we also have a record for, for the VM that we provision. So uh, everything seems to be working. Uh, and uh, let's move on to the uh, uh, creating so we can uh, leverage the network profile and create an on-demand network. For that, we'll go back to uh, and click on the Design tab and login. Looks like my uh, token has expired. Sign in. Okay, and click on our blueprint. And uh, what we'll do is now we want to target the on demand. Uh, network which is under the network policies and for us to do that we need to change the infrastructure code in the on the network itself so now instead of it saying existing I want to uh, say I want to use routed instead uh, st I'm still referencing the same network profile so now it's going to take instructions from the from the network policies and everything that we have set uh, in that uh, in that section uh, let's go ahead and test to make sure uh, that we're okay. Before we do that, let's uh, uh, rename this network to routed-net and uh, test our blueprint to make sure that uh, the, the blueprint has everything and all the requirements for it to provision successfully. Okay, so uh, looks like we're good to go. We tested it and let's go ahead and deploy. This time I'm going to call this on-demand network, let's call it IPAM network test. All right, and I'm gonna select my current draft since I have not created any uh, version for, these, for, the, for the blueprints and we'll hit deploy. Again, just that, like uh, the last time, we will. Uh, I'll, pa I'll pause the video here, and we'll come back once the uh, deployment is completed. Okay, so it looks like our deployment is completed successfully. Uh, you can see uh, uh, if we close the and go back to the deployments. Uh, this is my on-demand IPAM network test that we deployed. Uh, here's the, the uh, network that we've uh, created, which is the routed uh, network. This is a little bit more interesting since I'll show you what happens on the NSX side of things since this is an on-demand network that got created. And this is the VM that got created. And as you can see here, we have an IP address from the 151 range that we created. So if we actually go to vCenter first, here's our VM. Uh, 430 you can see here is the IP address and the network that got 
uh, uh, attached to is the network that uh, a VRA uh, with the integration of NSX created for us uh, in NSX uh, and connected this VM to. So if I actually go in and bring up my command prompt here and try to ping the IP just to make sure that we have uh, connectivity. So 16.151.2. Uh, and you can see we're getting a reply from the VM, so we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the what happened on the info block side of things. So uh, this is the uh, the network container type that we've created for the IP blocks uh, in info blocks, and uh, you can see there's a, the icon is a little bit different from the other one that we've created, which is really an IP range uh, that we used with the existing uh, network uh, uh, earlier. So if I click on the network uh, that I created, you see this is the block uh, of IP and you can see I've already reserved uh, an allocation here. So if I hover over it, you'll see that uh, it is uh, represent 33% of the IPI utilization. Remember that the subnet that we chose was a slash 24. I could have gone bit or wider and used the slash 16 and uh, the starting address here is zero and the end address is seven. Of course, zero and seven, zero being the subnet ID and seven being the broadcast IP. Um, all right, so in this uh, scenario, uh, so if we go to the list and click on the network again, you can see that block of range that we've created, uh, which is 151.2 till 151.6, since again, zero and seven are not uh, used in the, uh, are not used as an IP, uh, usable IPs. Uh, or usable IP addresses uh, uh, and uh, you can see my host that I provisioned or the VM that I provisioned have been updated on the IP address that it got uh, assigned to or leased uh, from uh, Infoblox and uh, VRA also leveraging the plugin updated the record with the MAC address that the VM has created when the VM got created on, on, the, uh, uh, on the vSphere in the cluster that we've uh, targeted. On the DNS side, uh, if we go and check our uh, DNS zone, we also can see that uh, there was a, a DNS record that got created for our uh, uh, VM uh, that we provisioned. Uh, so, uh, so far so good. Uh, now I'm going to switch to my NSX, uh, uh, NSX manager and show you what happened in NSXT. Uh, just to show you the uh, the network that got created uh, leveraging the on-demand uh, network. So let me sign in. This is a uh, NSX uh, T uh, 3.0, and uh, uh, I'm going to go to uh, networking and click on the logical switches. Uh, we can see here that uh, we've created a network. Uh, on the logical uh, called VRA VMware Lab routed network 429. And if we go to the tier one uh, logical routers, we can also see a logical router that has been created uh, uh, called v VRA VMware Lab routed dash net 429. So uh, logical switch uh, 429 and the tier one uh, uh, object that it's connected to 429. If I click on the uh, uh, tier one and check uh, the, the, the uh, router ports, you can see here that I have a downlink and the downlink uh, is uh, connected to the network uh, that we created. Uh, and uh, I have a gateway that was assigned, which is part of the range that we've uh, uh, created. And that's 172.16.151.1. Uh, um, so everything seems to be uh, good to go. And uh, uh, we'll uh, go back and uh, 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 putty. I will. I will putty into the under the VM to to just verify that we have the right gateway. So, uh, one seventy two dot sixteen one seventy one dot two. Uh, Login uh, into the VM and simply uh, cat out the itsy. Uh, what is it? Uh, network interfaces. And you can clearly see here uh, our IP, our subnet mask, which is the slash 28, and then the gateway uh, that was assigned as part of that block. Of course, our DNS VMware lab and uh, the DNS server that we're pointing to. But what I can do is actually try to connect to my uh, 151.1, which is my gateway. 
we're good there. Or uh, ping my uh, 150.1 gateway, uh, which is on the existing network. So those machines can talk as well. So 150.2 is the VM that we provisioned initially on the network. Yeah, so everything seems to be working uh, as planned. All right, so let's get back to the uh, uh, the slides and go to our next, uh, uh, which is the test and validate. Uh, we've already deployed a blueprint in VRA within Cloud Assembly. Uh, uh, what we can do now is uh, uh, view additional InfoBlox uh, extensibility action. Uh, uh, so uh, de like the details, the log trace, uh, the logs and the trace. So uh, uh, these are extensibility plugin uh, uh, actions are in VRA. So let's go ahead and, um, and go back to VRA and click on extensibility. And under extensibility, we will go to action run and we'll go to uh, integration runs. I'll, I'll choose all runs here. You can see all the action that uh, the uh, the plugin has taken, whether it's uh, uh, getting an IP block or getting an IP range uh, has been has been uh, uh, recorded here uh, uh, and uh, with a status. So if something fails, uh, uh, if if you will, uh, you can definitely go in and look at these action based uh, for troubleshooting purposes to make sure. For example, the uh, uh, allocate the IP allocation has worked. The info blocks update, uh, the getting the blocks, the ranges, all that stuff. So, for example, if we click here on this info block uh, blocks update, you'll see the details, runtime inputs, uh, it, uh, which is using Python. Uh, and if we look, go to the log, you can uh, clearly see that uh, what happened here in terms of uh, how we went back and updated the information back to the um, InfoBlox uh, Info grid. Uh, uh, so we've seen the, uh, the details on the views. Uh, uh, we, if we switch to logs, uh, of course, like I mentioned, this is the portion of the log uh, where you can also uh, uh, review. Uh, on the InfoBlox side, we did uh, uh, see the DNS zone. Uh, we did see the, uh, the the record has been created for the VM back in InfoBlox. Uh, I'll uh, I'll go back uh, right here. One extra thing I want to uh, showcase in this video is the extensible attributes that got uh, updated. So. Uh, All right, so we can go here into the uh, uh, data management or on the DNS side. And next to our record, I can click in the menu here and simply look at the extensible attributes. And you can see here the uh, two attributes that we talked about is the VMware source ID uh, these are VMware specific attributes that we created earlier and it got updated with the values populated with the data specific to the newly deployed uh, virtual machine. If we, uh, to view the, uh, uh, already looked at the IPAM and uh, we saw that we've updated the MAC address uh, for, the, uh, for the VM that we provisioned, uh, the, th the, the same thing applies on the uh, uh, manual network and the network container type. So we did that already and we saw the block uh, getting uh, uh, populated as well. And we saw, of course, the deployment in vCenter. All right, so uh, that, uh, that is for the creation. Let's go ahead now and uh, delete the deployment from VRA and view the InfoBlox plugin extensibility actions again and the InfoBlox grid manager so we can verify that the host records and the IPAM data for the deployment has been removed. So uh, uh, let's go back to uh, VRA. We'll go back to our deployments and uh, I will go ahead and delete both the deployments that we did. So I will start with the existing network deployment test and then go and also delete the on-demand IPAM network test. Okay, we'll give this a few minutes and uh, uh, I'll pause the video here and we'll come back once the 
deployment deletion has been completed. All right, so it looks like our deployment has been deleted. So first, uh, let's go ahead and uh, check the Infoblox grid. Uh, click the IPAM uh, home. Uh, if we click at the first network, the 150.0, uh, we can see uh, we don't have any more. Uh, uh, the, least, the least has been deallocated and the record has been removed. So there is no more VM uh, in the name column or a MAC address in the MAC address column. And if we click on the DNS, again, we don't see a record for the DNS. Uh, and if we go and check the other IPAM uh, uh, block, IP block 151, if we click on it, we have uh, nothing is assigned anymore. If, and if we go on the list, uh, uh, we don't have any network uh, uh, or sub network that uh, got assigned uh, also, of course, in the DNS. Uh, you notice that the second uh, uh, A record has been deleted as well. Uh, uh, if we uh, uh, go to uh, VRA and check our extensibility uh, runs here, uh, you'll see that uh, again, uh, we have uh, the deallocation uh, uh, action that has been, uh, 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 actions that has been uh, triggered. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, updated, uh, let me refresh this here. We'll go all on and everything completed uh, uh, and deallocation of the IP, all that stuff got uh, registered uh, as the action runs. Again, if there's any issues with any of those status, we can click in on the action, look at the detail runtime inputs for the action uh, or check the logs for anything. Uh, in terms of uh, if there's any issues. Uh, also, you can use the trace here uh, uh, to uh, uh, see if the action execution triggered from the API, uh, etc. A lot of good information uh, uh, that's available uh, to, uh, to you here in terms of the... Uh... One last thing uh, I'll mention, and I have this in the here, uh, in, the, in the slide, is that you can also view this activity in Infoblox by navigating to administrations, uh, logs, uh, you can choose either audit or syslog. So let's go ahead and check that out. So if we switch back to Infoblox, I can go to administrations, uh, click on the logs. And uh, in here I have the audit log uh, where also I can see a whole lot of information in terms of what has been assigned, what was deleted. And if I switch to syslog, I can also see a lot of good information and info in terms of what's happening here. Uh, in terms, for example, you can see here zone, zone VMware lab, apply delete for this machine uh, in uh, this uh, network or uh, with this uh, uh, A record address. So again, another way that you can check uh, on things. Uh, I'll uh, mention some of the limitation. Uh, this is uh, 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 the VRA 8.1 Infoblox uh, uh, Infoblox IPAM plugin version 1.1 is currently uh, managed by VMware, uh, and uh, uh, this was tested in vSphere 7, as you can see, and it works uh, well. So do check the documentation on the plugin. Um, the plugin functionality so far is is currently limited to IP address allocation network creation and DNS record uh, uh, creation uh, uh, as well. With that, uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope this was informative. If you like the video, please give it thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and smash that notification bell to get notified of any new videos I upload. If you have any comments, or questions, please leave it in the description below. With that, stay safe, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.